Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Million Dollar Body Podcast. If you're here, it's probably because you're a high performer, real estate agent, or business owner that's interested in maximizing your physique, finances, and your family time using fitness and nutrition as force multipliers in your life. That's a lot of Fs. If you're not already a part of the Facebook group, definitely go to n8trainingsystems.com slash group, trainingsystems.com slash group. That's where we stream these podcast episodes every Monday. You can join and ask questions. There's a ton of cool things happening in the group, as well as a massive amount of free resources. Again, go to n8trainingsystems.com slash group to join us there. If you're already in the group and watching it live, we're excited to have you because we are going to be talking today about how to get around some of these big stumbling blocks that a lot of men deal with on a, on a daily, weekly, monthly basis that are causing belly fat without them even realizing it. So before we get started, one of the big things we like to do here in the, in the community is give a shout out to the people accomplishing big things in the community. So I wanna call out right now, Nick Trevilian. Nick is right now in the middle of a 75 hard challenge. So I think he's on day nine or 10, which involves two a day workouts, hitting a gallon of water, reading some motivational material, following his nutrition plan, and he's just crushing it right now. He's always posting motivational, inspirational stuff on Facebook. So make sure you go ahead and follow him. He's um, the triumphant life, triumphant, at triumphant life, at the triumphant life. Sorry, Nick. That's on Instagram. Um, so Nick's been crushing it right now. I um, want to also give a shout out to Eric Kelly. EK is, um, has released about, I think, 65, 70 pounds of fat. He's on vacation right now, and he's still killing it. So one of the things that I just love about him is that his, his dedication and he is not, not having any excuses, even when he's going out of town or he's not necessarily um, in the place where he's got some great workouts and all of his foods prepped. So he's still not making any excuses, still getting it done. Want to give a shout out to you two lads today. Awesome job. All right. So belly fat in men, it's a thing, right? You know, we have a lot of words for it. We call it beer belly. We say, you know, like, oh, it's you know, just a little bit too much drinking, et cetera. But what is it and how can we, how can we avoid it? You know, obviously, we're not looking to, to pack on um, the weight just in our stomach region. So how can we avoid kind of the, the midlife curse that a lot of men seem to suffer by just gaining that belly fat? Well, first of all, what is belly fat? And I've talked about this before on several different, different occasions, but basically fat is gained in a couple different ways. Number one, you put your calories in your mouth. And then from there, the calories are going to go into a couple of different bowls, all right? And the bowls are like this. The first one is your muscle. So the more muscle you have means the, that bowl is bigger. The more often you use it, the more workouts you do, the more you sweat, that means you're emptying that bowl on a regular basis. So all the calories go into that first bowl. If, it, if there's excess calories because you didn't use your muscles as much as you should have, that bowl's already filled, it's not very big, whatever. That means that the next step is it's going to go into subcutaneous fat. That's below the skin fat. That's where we pinch on our stomachs and go, uh-oh, time to go on a diet. But that's just below your skin. There's really honestly nothing like super damaging or unhealthy about it. You might not like the way it looks, but like it's really not, it's nothing's going on with that. It's going to keep you from living your healthiest life. The next level is visceral fat. Now we're starting to get something unhealthy because visceral fat is your body's last defense against organ fat. So visceral fat is the fat that surrounds your organs underneath your skin and your muscle. And for most men, that presents itself in the belly region, unfortunately. So after a long weekend, too many drinks, too many um, unlimited bottomless fries from Red Robin, you got to get those pants a little bit tighter because always, this is a rule in life, that always weight has a sick sense of humor and it goes where you don't want it to go 100% of the time, you can count on it. You can count on the weight going in the exact opposite spot where you want it to go always. So after that visceral fat, then we get into something super damaging and, and detrimental to your health. It's called organ fat, which is where there's, you start getting fatty tissue developing within your kidneys, within your livers. Um, so it, it no longer are those organs functioning as highly as they could be, which is going to probably kill you at some point. So we want to stay away from the organ fat. We want to eliminate visceral fat. And then we can have our kind of ups and downs with subcutaneous fat, which is just kind of something that, that's life. That's just life. Not everyone can walk around at 5% because most of us have families and things we like to do. So what are the five things that are causing belly fat in men most of the time? And to be totally clear with you, this isn't based on some meta-analysis of 15 different scientific studies put on by the Mayo Clinic. 
this is what I've seen in my experience as 11 years as a, as a personal trainer, as a fat loss coach, as someone who's worked with a lot of different men in a lot of capacities, specifically entrepreneurs, business owners, people who have that hard charging type A mentality. Here's what they say causes their fat and here's how we can avoid those things, okay? So number one, the biggest thing that, that is always gonna be a, an issue for everyone, processed foods, okay? Processed foods, guys, when I, well, we talk about shopping this, the circumference of a grocery store, because all the aisles, all of them are filled with bags and boxes and cartons and crates and canisters and cookies and other alliter alliterative terms, with, filled with foods that are not made from real foods. There's a step, two steps, three steps removed from whole foods. So this is a big issue, okay? Because food scientists, people who are producing, manufacturing, delivering, and creating more processed foods are not your friend. They don't like you. They don't care about you. What they care about is putting more money into Kellogg's pocket. They care about putting more money into their employer's pocket and selling more and more and more chips, cookies, crackers, all these low dollar, low ticket, high margin products, because how much do you think it costs to, to produce two liters of soda? Like nothing. The bottle is way more expensive than the actual ingredients. How much do you think it costs to produce a, a bag of tortilla chips? Like two cents. Again, the packaging is the more important, the more expensive piece, the packaging, the shipping, all that stuff is way more expensive than the actual food itself. Food. We'll use that term real loosely here. But the reason processed food is so bad for you is starts with the, the goal. What's the goal of processed food? It's to sell more processed food. Well, how do they do that? By getting you to buy more of it. So how do they do that? Well, by making you want to eat more quickly and not feel satiated by it. Side note, this is the same reason a lot of people will put taurine in their energy drinks or pre-workouts. Some people don't know better, but some people do it because they want you to buy more Red Bulls because taurine produces an effect that is the opposite of caffeine. It mutes you, it slows you down. So by putting taurine and caffeine together, you buy more, you buy more uh, Rockstar. That's a problem. So these food scientists are getting together and they're, they're combining these perfect ratios of sugar, fat, and salt into food products that are going to create the maximum taste response going to make you absolutely crave the foods they're, they're giving you. They're going to make the foods light up the pleasure centers in your brain. A lot of people compare it to drugs, cocaine. You get a similar, you get a similar read on like an EKG, like a brain mapping scan when someone does cocaine and when someone eats an Oreo. You know, obviously there's going to be a big difference there, but like the same place in the brain, the pleasure center lights up with both things. And that's just the way they want it. They want these to be pleasurable experiences. So when you're stressed, you're running late, you're having a bad day, you haven't eaten at all, you're like, let me just snatch up some Oreos because I know it's going to make me feel better. These processed foods, they're combining two things that always put you in a bad place. They're combining fat and sugar or fats and carbs, okay? And when you combine these two things, carbs, as we've talked about a lot of times before, they're an amplifier. So when you amplify your body's response to something and then you give it a lot of fat, it's not going to be like, hey, let's go, for a, let's go for a run. Let's hit the workout. Let's, let's get on the road. Let's crush it. You're going to start storing more fat at an accelerated rate because your body, you've already given your body the sugar, the carbohydrates, the amplification, and then you're giving it these low-quality fats, trans fats, different um, low-grade stuff that you're not going to find any like olive oil in an Oreo, right? You're not, they're, not using, they're not using avocado oil to make your tortilla chips. Sorry, that's just not, that's not what's happening. So you're combining these two things together and then the salt is just on there because that helps all the other flavors pop. So they put that in there. These food scientists are no dummy. They've had a lot of years of experience and, and things to work off of. That's why McDonald's French fries, did you know that they're coated with a layer of sugar? You can't taste it, but your brain knows it's in there because every time you eat them, you're like, why would I have one fry when I can have 17 fries? Ugh. Processed foods. Number one thing, if you can get rid of processed foods in your diet, you're so far ahead of the curve. You can just shut this off right now because um, this, is the, this is the big one. This is the big one. So no processed foods. Try to avoid stuff that comes in wrappers, in boxes. Try to eat those things that actually look like they came from the ground or at one point had a face or a mom. You know, Those are the things that are ideal to eat for your health, for your physique. Number two. 
cortisol. Now, in the uh, Million Dollar Body Group, we had a couple of people when I was asking, what's, what do you think is a big reason that, that um, men can't lose fat? And, it's, and a lot of people came back and said cortisol, stress. Okay? Now, cortisol is a stress hormone. Okay? It gets a bad rap because we need cortisol. It's not good. It's not bad. But too much of anything can be a killer, right? So cortisol is something that helps you wake up in the morning. About an hour after you wake up, your cortisol level spikes and levels off. Okay, it helps us wake up, get out of bed, get moving right away. All right, some of us have replaced the cortisol in our system with um, high octane coffee, and that's just you know a personal thing. But cortisol is good for us. All right, but let's take a closer look a little bit what's going on behind the scenes, and I'll try not to make it too scientific. But cortisol essentially plays a really important role in regulating blood sugar, blood pressure keeping your inflammation down, helping you cope with stress, and then pain modulation, making sure that you're not feeling like in pain all the time. So the problem that comes with cortisol when stress becomes relentless, unstoppable, not never turning off. That's why we want to have those times, those periods of peak stress and then relaxation, like, like working out hard and then recovering. Eat, uh, going out and doing something with like getting like amped up work, whatever, going and speaking in front of a group and then relaxing with our family. So we're going to have peaks and valleys. But what happens is when our, when our stress level is constantly elevated, it becomes an issue. I'll tell you a story. One of my clients was doing everything right. And I say that sometimes and I am like, yeah, he's, he's walking, he's doing whatever, but he was literally doing whatever, everything right. He was tracking his food in my fitness pal. He was hitting his numbers. He hit his protein. Um, he was sleeping, he's sleeping pretty well. He was hitting his workouts, coming in to work out with me at the gym I was working at in Seattle for three times a week. And I was like, man, like, well, what is going on? Like, well, what's your life like? And he just went off. He's like, my job has been killing me. I'm working at this company. They're demanding so much of my time, my energy. It's nonstop. My Blackberry's, this is, you can tell it's from a while back. So my Blackberry's going off all, time, all hours of the night. I have to answer these clients from Europe and Asia and I have to get back to them. And he's like, my mind's going a million miles a minute. And I'm like, you know, even though I'm going to sleep, I'm getting like six, seven hours. It's still like, I'm waking up to do this thing. And like, and then I, you know, I got a baby on the way and then my kids are doing this. And I'm like, whoa, like, what would you say your stress level is on like a daily basis? And he was like, easy. It's like 10, it's 10, it's always 10. So this guy was dealing with stress from his family, stress from his job, stress from trying to lose weight, stress from working out because working out's a stressor. That's not stress relief um, for, your, for your body, for your physical form. So his stress level was up to here all the time. So when you're trying to stack on like weight loss or anything like that, while you're so stressed out all the time, you essentially can't. Here's the reason why is because when you're in stress overload like that, your cortisol levels, your stress hormones will remain unnaturally high instead of following kind of this daily like up and down that we were supposed to experience. Elevated cortisol levels means elevated blood sugar. Like we talked about earlier, it's kind of an amplifier. The more blood sugar, the more fat you can store. The more blood sugar you have in there, the more insulin you have, which helps you store fat. So even if you're eating the same, your body's going to hold on to more, right? So yes, calories matter. Yes, calories in versus calories out. But also like if you're not managing the stress in your life, then no matter what you do or how hard you, how hard you go in the gym, you're not going to see any improvements because you're constantly elevated. You're constantly up here. So it's kind of two sides of the coin. The sympathetic nervous system, that's our fight or flight. That's that. That's like up. That's up. And it's not always bad. It's good to have that. But also the parasympathetic nervous system, that's our rest and digest. So if your body's constantly elevated into sympathetic 16 hours out of the day and you're, and you're very rarely getting to come to that parasympathetic, you need to manage that. And the easy ways to do that, some relaxation, some stretching. You can do yoga. Meditation's a great option. Going for walks is great. Um, there's a million different ways. <laughs> Google stress relief. Go get a massage. You can figure it out. I know. I believe in you. Speaking of walking, our third thing, our third thing that causes belly fat in men is not walking. Guys, I got some bad news for you. Bad news. A lot of times people will tell me, hey, when I hit 
35, my metabolism crashed. When I hit 40, my metabolism just shit the bed. When I hit this age, you'll find out, you'll see, you'll see. That's never the reason why your metabolism decreased or you, fought, you felt like you just hit, you, got, you gained a lot of weight. The thing that, that always, 100% of the time happens in conjunction with your metabolism decreasing because of age is a decrease in movement, okay? And there's a fancy term in fitness for this called NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which is basically means that um, when you're not working out, what kind of movement are you getting? Where are you, what are you doing? Where are you going? Are you walking? Are you moving? Or are you just sitting and watching Netflix? So when that NEAT is not, is not where it needs to be, that's when your body starts holding on to more calories because you're just not burning off as many. So for example, for me, during quarantine, I felt like, I felt like, oh man, my metabolism just really slowed down. But what it really was, was I had just stopped going out. I wasn't working at the gyms anymore. I wasn't going to people's houses. I wasn't like getting out of, of my own house very often. I was sitting at a computer for probably eight, nine hours a day, just sitting there doing stuff, working online. And that's, that's great. It's amazing to have that opportunity. But what I noticed is that like when I put on a step counter, my steps were stupid low, stupid low. And what happens is you don't really understand how many calories you could burn just by walking around and doing ticky tack things throughout the house, doing a little some gardening, going on walks to take yourself to take your calls rather than, rather than um, taking them at your computer, doing a standing desk rather than, than sitting all the time. These little things, people tend to way underestimate how many calories they're going to burn because uh, off of little small things like walking and moving and standing. And they tend to way overestimate how many calories you're burning in an hour long workout. So we try to put all our eggs in the workout basket and be like, you know what? I just hit Orange Theory Fitness. They told me I burned, I was in the, I was in the orange zone, bro. I burned like 900 calories. I crushed it. But what happens is if that's your only workout for the day and then you're not doing anything else, um, you're just staying seated, you're sedentary the rest of the time, you're not setting yourself up for success because even if you are burning that, that full amount, then there's no other place for your body to burn off calories. So you're not necessarily setting yourself up to be burning fat throughout the day either. So you might, you might burn some, like for the workout, you'll burn some a little bit after the fact because you're rebuilding muscle tissue, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna set you up for long-term success the same way that getting 7,000, 10,000 steps in, going for a walk, having a standing desk is going to long-term. Those things make a big difference. So when you stop walking, like a lot of us did, you stop moving around, stop getting out of the house, like, like it's happened, I don't know, pretty recently, like April, May, then it can be very detrimental to your belly, your long-term health. So I found that I was in a gaining phase during this time. I was trying to gain mass and all of a sudden I was like gaining a steady pace. I was pretty much like putting in the work, doing the things and it just spiked. All of a sudden I was like, wow, I shouldn't have gained eight pounds this week. That's too much. So to keep an eye on that, especially as you feel like if, we're, if you're sitting at home a lot more, if you're on your computer more often, if you're working from home, if you're not getting out as much, keep an eye on this. Might be interesting to get a pedometer, something to record your steps, or just make sure that you're hitting 30 minutes of, of walking throughout the day. If you don't have 30 minutes, you probably have three blocks of 10 minutes. One of um, a coach I look up to, Stan Efferding, he, he actually has this practice called 10-minute walks that he does after every meal. It sounds like this really fancy thing that I say walks. No, but he, wa he walks for 10 minutes after every meal. And it's based on this, um, this ancient Indian practice of, they call it 100 steps, which after every meal, you would take 100 steps minimum, which helps with a lot of things. Helps with your digestion, burns a little bit of calories, sets your body up to take those nutrients and put them in the right spots and use them effectively. So it can be really, really effective if you just like, after breakfast, take a walk. After lunch, take a walk. After dinner, take a quick walk. And just doing that a couple times per day, even though it's small, these little things, they really add up over time. You do that for a year, you know, now you've walked, I don't know, some of you with a quick, quick math. Mm, a million minutes, I think. I'm, sure, I'm not sure. Math's hard. So that's number three. We talked about processed foods, number one. Number two is cortisol. Number three, not walking enough, not moving enough. Number four, it's alcohol. Y'all. In no world is alcohol gonna be good for your body, your recovery, 
your fat loss. It does not. We talked about this a lot on, uh, I think, two podcasts ago. I went really in depth on what alcohol actually does to your body. Also, I was wearing a cool hat. So if you haven't checked it out, make sure you get on that. But alcohol, if you, if you have to give up one thing for your, for, to your fat loss to kick in, it's going to be alcohol. It, it's really the, if you're drinking every single night, if you're having a glass of wine every single night, or if you're having like four or five, six beers per day on the weekends, giving those things up will make a monstrous difference in how you choose to, or how much fat you can burn, how much fat you can stop from building up. And especially, I don't know if you're like me at all in this situation, but when I drink, my food choices super decrease in quality. It could just be me. I could just be making this up here. But I find that when I'm drinking, it doesn't matter what it is. I want to eat it, especially if it's called nachos. Definitely want to eat it at that point. So if you're drinking, your inhibitions go down. You're also basically just storing fat because like we talked about in that, that alcohol episode, alcohol puts a, calls a timeout, calls a technical on fat loss because your body is trying to filter out the poison you're absorbing from all those Coors Lights. So ditch the alcohol. You're going to start seeing better results. If you want more information on that, check out two episodes ago, Million Dollar Body Podcast. The last one, number five, guys, this is really, really important. This is something that, we, that, that everyone deals with. I think it, it happens um, to a lot of people when they come, become parents. It's just what it is. Poor sleep. Stop sleeping as well, okay? So um, I noticed this in myself because during quarantine, I stopped you know, having social interactions and friends. And when you take the five people that you spend the most time with and you kind of like, okay, that's my circle. That's who I'm going to be like. And now um, for me, th this one is myself. This one is uh, me. This one's my wife. This one is my two-year-old. And this one's me again. So I'm three of the five people I'm spending the most time with. That's a bad call for me. That's not healthy. I just get more and more and more into my own brain. And that's, nobody wants that. You can go back and look at the podcast from May and you'd be like, who, this guy's out of his mind. I'm not sorry. Anyway, so I had, I had um, gotten a game on my computer that I wanted to play with some friends. It's called Heroes of the Storm. It's pretty nerdy, to be totally honest with you. But it's a great way for me to um, enjoy some social interactions, even from a distance, with friends who live across the country. So we'd get together, we'd play. And what I noticed is that, like, so the only times I'm, I, can, I can really play is uh, late at night when the baby goes down, everything's calm quiet, you know, and get on the, get on the computer, pwn a few noobs, you know, put down some, put down some W's, but this game would get me so ramped up. So like, ugh, I just, I gotta win. And I'd get like, I actually logged it on my whoop strap. I have a, a whoop strap that would log my heart rate and my heart rate was going to like 120 or 130 playing these video games, which sounds unhealthy probably is, but what was happening is it was like not just cutting into my sleep during the actual physical time that I was playing the video game, right? Because if I'm playing a video game, I'm not sleeping, right? But also it was not setting me up for success in, in getting to sleep because I had raised my heart rate. I had gone into that sympathetic nervous system, that fight or flight reaction with a video game. So it was really like putting a uh, damper on getting long, restful nights of sleep. So I was seeing that it was, it was taking me longer to get to sleep. I wasn't sleeping as deeply and I was waking up more often throughout the night when I was playing video games. It seemed like past 1030 was kind of the, the cutoff time. So something I had to keep in mind, like, yeah, I, I like the, I like the social aspect of it, but like, is it worth not getting, not getting sleep on the days when I know I have to wake up early next morning? Probably not. So there you have it. Those are the five um, biggest things that can really play into the, the belly fat gain in men. And I know we didn't really get into poor sleep, but like, honestly, if you're, just, if you're getting six and a half, seven hours of sleep every, consistently, that's the biggest thing. If you're going to be able to be consistent with the sleep that you're getting, so you're always going to bed at the same time, you're waking up at the same time, even on weekends, that's going to make a, big, a bigger difference than getting six hours of sleep throughout the week and then 10 hours on the weekends. So that, that's the big thing. I think you'll probably know if you're not getting enough sleep. So, I mean, the other things are going to be cutting out caffeine, making sure you're taking a, like a, a, a vitamin that has um, magnesium and zinc in it in order to maximize your sleep. Also, some certain things like melatonin, CBD, different things like that that can really help getting to sleep. So that's, what, that's, our, that's our show for today. 
We're talking about the five different things that cause men to hold belly fat. We're talking about cortisol, processed foods, not enough walking, guilty, too much alcohol, guilty, poor sleep, guilty. But if we can overcome a lot of these things or at least start moving in a positive direction, this is going to make a bigger difference than trying to grit it out, count your calories, crush these workouts, and basically push yourself into that high stress state with that high elevated cortisol levels for long term. So work on this. You call, these are like the easiest, like lowest barrier of entry things to hit without like a dedicated like personal trainer hitting the gym all the time, doing keto. If you can sleep the same amount of time, if you can eliminate some alcohol, if you can walk a little bit more, then a lot of those things become so much easier. And the, like the hardcore diets and stuff become kind of redundant because you're already getting results by doing that low barrier of entry, the things that are the easiest to get a handle of, rather than trying to make things more complicated, which breeds more stress, more cortisol, less sleep because you're meal prepping, you're baking for tomorrow morning, and you know drinking because it's largely bullshit. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Million Dollar Body Podcast. Make sure you like, subscribe, post about it, write a review, tell your mom, text your aunt, everybody. So, and we'll see you next Monday for a live screening of the Million Dollar Body Podcast in the Million Dollar Body Facebook group. So make sure you check that out. If you're not already a member, n8trainingsystems.com slash group will get you there. Have a great day. Be blessed.